Thank you for listening to Everything's Messy podcast. We appreciate your interest in health and wellness. However, it is important to note that the content provided in this podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information shared here is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The hosts and guests featured on Everything's Messy podcast are not licensed healthcare professionals, and the discussions within the episode should not be considered as personalized medical guidance. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding your medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. If you have a medical emergency, call your doctor or 911 immediately. Reliance on any information provided by Everything's Messy podcast or its guests is solely at your own risk. This podcast may discuss general health topics, lifestyle choices, and wellness trends, but these discussions should not be interpreted as individualized medical recommendations. Every individual's health needs are unique, and what works for one person may not be suitable for another. We encourage you to consult with a healthcare professional before making any significant changes to your diet, exercise routine, or health practices. Everything's Messy Podcast and its hosts are not responsible for any actions taken based on the information provided during the podcast. Remember, your health is a personal matter, and professional medical advice is essential for making informed decisions about your well-being. Thank you for listening to Everything's Messy Podcast. Everything's Messy Podcast brought to you by Dreamweaver Media. So, incredible company. I'm so excited that I've had the chance to work with this company. Let me tell you, if you are looking to level up your podcast, level up your business, anything that you need to get very clear and laser focused with your goals for your company, you need to reach out to Dreamweaver Media. They have a strategy session report that they will do for you. And what that will do is you will discover your dream audience persona, define your business's why, craft a brand identity that speaks directly to your target audience, identify your marketing goals and create a custom plan and receive a detailed visual shoot plan that brings everything to life. Let me tell you, this company is amazing. So reach out to dreamweavermedia.co, that's dreamweavermedia.co, check out their website, for more information. Hey there, it's Sarah Wilson, and welcome to Everything's Messy podcast. Yep, you heard it right. Everything is messy because, well, it is. But here's the thing, in the mess, there's strength waiting to be found, and that's what we're all about here. My mission, to break the silence around chronic illness and build a community that's supportive, understanding, and downright empowering. So if you're ready to navigate the chaos, buck the conventional medical system, and embrace authentic healing, you're in the right place. We're going to tackle the big questions like how to balance it all, where the family fits into the messy equation and everything in between. This is your messy space, a place where we're not afraid to get real, have those important conversations, and maybe even share a few laughs along the way. I'll be sitting down with incredible people, each with their unique messes to explore their stories, experiences, and the lessons they've learned in the chaos. From unconventional healing methods to finding strength you never knew you had, we're covering it all. So grab a seat, get comfy, and let's dive into the messy. Because here at the Everything's Messy podcast, we're turning chaos into strength. Together, we're going to embrace the mess. Are you ready? Let's get messy. Well, hi, messy people. Today, we have another incredible episode for Everything's Messy podcast. I have with me today, Melissa Dossie. Is that correct? Daffy. Dassey. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, a fellow homeschool mom, you know, I talk a little bit and kind of briefly glance over the homeschooling that we do because that's really um, not, we don't really get into that on this podcast, but I saw her Instagram and she is just head into the whole mess of what homeschool is and she's even taken it a bit further. So I thought it'd be great to have her come on the podcast and talk about homeschooling. Welcome, Melissa. And thank you. Hello. Uh, so excited that you're going to do this podcast with us. Um, like I said, looking at some of the things that you're posting on Instagram, you know, let's back up and just how did you get started in your journey? Um, so we're a military family and we were living overseas during COVID. So the second semester is when COVID hit and my oldest was in um, kindergarten and so they went all virtual and that just was a nightmare she was already behind com- according to them a bit um, and so like trying to do zoom calls for kindergartners and try to figure out how they could split the time of 30 minutes here or there to answer questions like it was just rushed a lot of interruption cut off chaotic so stressful for her um, that I was like 
we're not going to keep doing this if the pandemic keeps going. Um, so you originally started homeschooling due to the pandemic? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so that, that semester ended and um, I went and bought, uh, gosh, what was it? One of the Christian curriculum. Totally thrown. Well, I bought a Christian nice curriculum. Huh? There's Horizon, there's Alpha Omega, there's Albeca. There's a few out there. I'm not finishing a bell. It's a really good one, and I'm totally drawing a blank. I'll, it'll come to me. Oh, good and beautiful? No, no, but it's similar to that one. Okay. I'm totally drawing a blank. I still have some. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> That's so it. I bought that. We started homeschooling, so this is not for her first grade. We pulled her completely out of the school. We're doing that. Um, and then it just got to be really difficult throughout that semester uh, because I hadn't done, like, the mental work that I think a parent should do if they're going to do homeschooling and I didn't know um and I was also pregnant and having a baby I was doing my master's and then my husband had to leave for a training for a few months going through all the feels and yeah let's back up for a minute I think um it's really important to stress because I know this is something that a lot of people had to learn there is a big difference in homeschooling and doing school at home And it's not the same thing. And so I like you were talking about to be mentally prepared for that endeavor of actually homeschooling is completely different than doing school at home. It's still to me, I think the ones that are doing school at home, it's still um, maybe check a few boxes where you still have more control and things like that. But it is not the true, you know, embodiment of homeschooling. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and so also the one friend that was kind of helping me along out there, because I really didn't have a huge community. I'm sure there's a bunch of homeschooling where we were, but I just I didn't know a lot of the people. And so one friend was helping me, but she she is like school at home type of person um, and she's good at it. And that's fine. Sure. Her mom was a preschool teacher, so she kind of really learned a lot about how to keep the kids engaged and keep it going. Um, and so I kind of still thought like, oh, this, this is how it's supposed to be. And then I was feeling the comparison game of like they're falling more behind mm-hmm. and postpartum health. And so one of my best friends was like, you need to put her back in school. Like for not just for her, but for you. Um, and, you know, it took a lot and it was really hard feeling like I was quitting and giving up on something that I knew and my I needed to do. Um, I was scared to talk to my husband about it because he was like, you made the huge decision to not put them in the school with the masks and then you want to put them back in. And like, it was, it was hard, but I talked to him and he was like, you have to do what you have to do. You're the one that's taking care of them. I have to be gone for months on end sometimes. So, um, you know, I had his blessing in that and I ended up putting my preschooler into the school with her too, just to kind of like, I need to step completely back take some postpartum time, finish my master's, um, and all of that. I mean, she wasn't in school, like, all day because it was kindergarten, first grade, and there were school hours there were early. Uh, but then that continued to beat me up. I'm like, mm. this, doesn't, this just isn't right. Um, but we did enjoy the school and the teachers out there, and things started to get better with the pandemic where we were. So um, that improved, but then we got orders to California. Mm. So my move it state. <laughs> opened a whole new door. And um, as soon as we found that out, we were like, oh, like we already know like where this is kind of going. So we got into California in the second semester for the kids' school. We moved in and I just put them in the school that's right by us because we have to get settled in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure it out. But I. I mean, he and I both knew God was urging me to homeschool again anyways. It was just a matter of when and how. Um, and so those four months in the school were, like, their teachers were awesome, but I could tell they were overwhelmed. They were stressed out. Like, they were they were hanging by a thread. And so I can't say that we personally have ever really had any bad teachers or anything. But, I mean, one, I've seen them, and two... I just, I felt bad. Like, if I could have hired them to come on and just come to my house and teach my kids, I would not. Yeah. Because those teachers were really, really good. So I don't always, like, I'm not here to, like, trash the school teachers, people with the heart. But it's more like, as a whole, 
there's so much at play that a lot of people don't realize. They don't. And I think teachers now, I mean, their hands are tied. And, you know, they, I think they probably want to do more or do things differently and they just can't. They just can't. Right. Right. Yeah. And so uh, that's when over those, that year, year and a half, whatever was in between, I was doing a lot of research, like reading homeschooling mom blogs, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. Sure. Getting and even that can be overwhelming. Even having yeah. to process up all that information. And I remember I kind of went through the same, down the same rabbit hole. And one of the books that I read, I believe it was um, the book uh, of the wild and free. And just the first chapter where it just talks about, you know, letting go of all that we know about it just kind of gave me a sense of like, okay, I just need a clean slate, start over. But that's really hard, especially when it's been beat into our heads for so many years of what, you know, it should look like or what we should be doing or comparing, you know, to the neighbors or friends or something like that. That's really hard to like deprogram. And that's what I call it. You have to deprogram yourself big time, like a big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of it, like that was exactly what I was looking at was like de-schooling, deprogramming, de all of this un learning um you know what there's so many different terms for it because it's been so much ingrained into us for a really long time now um so yeah i pulled them out and it, even that summer like i guess my husband like knew you know it was on my heart and on my mind um, a movie we love is um god's not dead the fourth one is about homeschooling and oh. fighting for our rights and so like we both get like Oh, oh my gosh, like in tears watching this because it's like, yes, this is what more parents need to be doing. It's fighting for our right to even do that. Um, so he knew I was going to say it at some point, like I'm pulling the plug. <laughs> but then it was also a matter of like me planning to go back to work when we got into the stage, which I hadn't done yet. I have a master's degree. So like the plan was, okay, all the kids in school and daycare and whatever. And then it was like, actually, no, we're just going to keep staying home and do life together and not shove our kids to somebody else to raise them or teach mm -hmm. them um and so i was nervous to even bring it back up to him like i know i quit before but i really i really feel like i'm being urged to do this and he was like i already knew that it was taking you so long to like <laughs> admit it <laughs> well i'm glad i'm glad you had the support of him because that can be a big challenge as well yeah yeah for sure so that's that's that that's where we are <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many things I could definitely go on and on about the beauty of homeschooling, but you have to get to that place. And you talked about having a master's and that's that's an incredible accomplishment, but I want everybody to know you don't have to have a master's to homeschool. And oh, no, and my my master's has nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you don't need that. That was just me trying to figure out my own thing. So that's awesome. So then let's talk a little bit about um, you You sort of become now, um, I don't want to say outspoken, but you kind of have this platform now that you're trying to talk about, you know, the things, the injustices that are happening with our children and what, what uh, as parents, what are we doing to stand up for those injustices and things like that? So talk a little bit about how you got there. Um, it was all kind of going on in the back end. Um things I was already doing and researching, like I said, like it wasn't just unschooling my brain, but all of these things, obviously the pandemic like stirred up a lot in a lot of people. And it really just came to a point of um, not wanting to live in fear, not being held back by conflict and confrontation, mm -hmm. because I'm always like trying to keep the peace and being a people pleaser. And it just got to the point where it's like, that's what got us here. <laughs> yeah. In so many ways. And I'm not okay with that. I've got children and their future to think about. Um, so it, how it came to me doing it on a platform was um, network marketing, my job, you know, trying to figure out something that I'm truly passionate about and would be wanting to talk about day after day after day. And so it was like, well, this is my life. I've been homeschooling, um, you know, and there's a lot of different ways people can do it. And I think it's very important to know the why why someone's homeschooling and it's not just a one quick answer for me it's a laundry list sure. of reasons why i'm homeschooling and i think a lot of people don't realize that especially being here in california there are so many people that 
are against so much, but don't realize it's happening in their own backyard. Sure. You know, they're so t- stuck on the nostalgia of what it was when they grew up or, um, oh, that's in like the bigger cities over there. That's not over here. That, you know, we live in a conservative area, so we're fine. No, you're not immune to any of that. Because right. You're still within the same state and, and it's just unfortunate. So yeah, I just got to the point where I'm like, this is my life, so I have no problem talking about it. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think, I think you know, and I've said this before, if anything good came out of the pandemic, I think I can say that a lot of parents started to pay attention to things that I don't think they really knew before. And so, yes, it was, you know, terrible and we lost liberties and it should have never happened to begin with. But if you can spin it positively, which I'm not sure you can, but if you can, oh. I think it's safe to say that parents maybe woke up and were like, wait, what are you learning in school? Wait, what is the teacher? What is happening here? Why are we talking yeah. about this? And that, I think that was super important. And it, it definitely you saw across, you know, the country that parents started to get involved with the school board and, you know, try to fight back and take things back. But I feel like it was going on for so long that it, without having any accountability that now we're trying to play catch up with it. Um, but it sounds like that's sort of what you're doing too, right? You're trying to get the awareness out there. And and what has been the response, you think, has been mostly positive? Yeah. Um, I mean, I even get teachers coming to me and saying, thank you for, you know, speaking out because I can't. Like, like it's not easy for me to just go and take another job. So I'm stuck in it and that red tape that we kind of mentioned earlier. So thank you for at least doing that. And I mean, I, I've built great relationships um, and that's been amazing, whether it's parents or teachers, um, people that sit in on like the city council meetings, the school board meetings, you know, showing up at these events and staying there until the clock runs out to to defend children. Um, and I'd say it's been a pretty positive response overall. Like to me, it, to me, like one person, like that's enough just to help one person, one sure. family, like one set of children. Like for me, that's enough. Absolutely. And though. I've got messages like, you know, multiple times a week of saying thank you or not even on the school realm completely, but um, all of like the sexual agendas. Like I've had, um, you know, a wife who came and said, thank you so much for everything that you're doing because my husband transitioned. My 13 year old is depressive and wants herself and my other two kids don't know what's going on. Like, why did, what happened to daddy? Like when you have people coming to you and saying, thank you for speaking out on stuff like this, because it is happening in the schools and in the music and the TV and all of that stuff, like it's going to save someone. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time, you know? Um, So just not giving up and keep going forward about it. So um, that was a recent one, but there's been so many, there's been people that have said, um, yeah, my, my kindergartner came home, school started, and they had to do the, the pronoun survey. Mm. Like, what? They don't even, like, teach pronouns as a part of language and speech until, like, second grade or first grade. Like, why? Why? <laughs> and so, you know, just coming to me, like, so what are the steps? What do I need to do? Um, and so I tell them, you know, I tell them how in California, what the options are. If they're in a different state, I tell them the options. I point them in the direction of homeschool legal defense association Mm -hmm. i tell them you know what their reporting um rules and regulations are and just give them all of the resources that they need possible um i suggest you know if they want to go curriculum route or not if they want to just take a year to just let their whole family kind of decompress from everything um and that's actually really popular. There's a lot of families that do that, just not just so much from, you know, depending on what grade they are, just from the stress of having to keep up, depending on if they're middle school or high school, and just all of the stuff that comes with having to keep that grind, then they just take a step back and they're like, okay, we're just going to be for a little bit because it's just mm-hmm. so hard. It's it's taxing so much on, mm-hmm. on the parents. It's, it's just crazy. What Was there a particular like one thing or one off that happened to you that started you on this quest? Huh. I don't I don't know. I think just I've kind of really always been an advocate for for kids. Um my husband and I lost our first child. She 
was born with a congenital heart defect. And so like, that's kind of always stirred a fire in me to just kind of do your research, be fully educated on everything that's going on, no matter what, like medical stuff, uh, educational, entertainment, everything. Sure. Like, instead of just assuming everything you're being told is right and correct and appropriate, just because they have a title on it. Um, there's been so much that has shown that that's a lot of garbage a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, like, we can't trust plenty of those people in those positions, but you can't just assume that you can trust them because Definitely. a lot of it's, you know, it's follow the money and you're going to get your answers. Definitely. And yeah, so I just kind of had that fire from the get go with, you know, the, the other kids that they were coming along and it's just like, I'm very passionate about why I homeschool it. And it's, it, the agenda's going on. It's social, emotional, like intelligence and um, awareness. And, you know, my kids being able to, regulate themselves and learn how to do that instead mm -hmm. of coming home completely beat up and worn down mm -hmm. at the end of the day um my oldest you know facing stuff with like anxiety peer pressure or things like that just wanting to keep up um would really take a toll on her and she's like i don't get any of this stuff that i'm learning like none of it makes sense and then my middle child coming home because he's extremely helpful and respectful in class and he's like but four kids, you know, were, they're never doing what they're supposed to do. And I don't understand why. Why don't they listen and have respect and just enjoy learning and having fun? So they would ruin their chance at like a pizza party or something like that. And he would come home crushed and in tears. Like, I worked really hard. Why am I getting punished? Yep. It's just not right. No, it isn't. And I, I would say some of your reasons mirror, and I'm sure that is for a lot of families, but for us, it was definitely the bullying. We had such a hard time with that. And, um, you know, when you, when you think back to when we were that age and, it, you know, people might have picked on you or whatever, but I don't think it was on the level or if it was, I was unaware, but I don't think it was on the level, the gravity of it, that it is today of just the it, it just the bullying that's incessant it doesn't stop and it doesn't matter what teachers get involved in it doesn't matter get what get put in place to maybe help or protect or separate it's not followed and it's it's not it doesn't solve anything it does not solve anything and so I you know that was one of the questions I had to ask myself you know and there was a myriad of them but one of them is I can do better than this like mm -hmm. I, the, the, if this is what they're like doing every day and maybe they get maybe two hours of actual schoolwork with all the other BS of, you know, having to ask when to go to the bathroom or having to go sit through an assembly or having to do a fire drill or all these things that are distracting and taking away from the actual learning. It's like, I, I can do better than that. You know, if we're going to be talking two or three hours of actually sitting down and doing, I can't handle that, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not the smartest person at all, but I can figure that part out. Right, because there is so many resources out there now. You know, all of, like, the online help, video. Yes. There's, there's like, no reason not to at least try it. And I definitely tell people, like, I mean, sure, you know, they always say to, like, give yourself 90 days and there's six months for something, right? I mean, for a school year, I would say give yourself six months to a year and just keep sticking it out. Yeah. Um, And just really analyze, like, the pros and cons at the end of that, where you're at, where you were, and realize, like, to me, like, any pro, <laughs> any pro on that list is going to probably, like, outweigh any of those cons. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and it's it's a moving ship. Like, what you start out with, even the curriculum you might start out with with that year, it may morph into something else. It may change. It's not going to look like you think it should look. It took us a long time to find our sea legs and what would work. And it took me figuring out how my child learns. You know, we we had to learn, you know, kinesthetic versus auditory versus verbal versus spatial, like all these different things. And you would be surprised. There's a lot of parents who don't take that step to see not only what kind of learner they are, but what kind of learner their child is. And how does that mirror up? How does that yeah. match? And, you yeah. know, my, my oldest, she was very good. She was, you know, very easy as far as I could put on a lecture for her to take, take notes. No problem. But my other two, I called them my, my wild bunch. That was not going to work for them. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a constant 
you know, morphine butterfly that would just change pr- most on a daily basis. Like it took us a really long time to find if I think back, if I would have quit, you know, that wouldn't have done them any good. And then they would have put been put right back into rigid regimented things that wouldn't have fit them anyway. So I knew I had to stick it out, but I definitely agree with you of just don't quit, stick with it. It's going to take a long, at least for us, maybe it doesn't take that long for others, for us. It <laughs> mm-hmm. It's an adjustment for sure. I mean, especially if for the families who have been in having their kids in the school longer. So like, at least I kind of got it early on, um, which is a tremendous help. And then my youngest is a toddler. So like, if, if it's up to me, like she won't ever step foot in like the school. So um, I would say like the biggest thing is I kind of wish there was so much more I would have learned about like even how to start teaching reading, for example, that could have helped my oldest and then trickled down. Because I think if we had started the proper way of that early on, she wouldn't have even, you know, she wouldn't be where she, she would be ahead, you know, mm-hmm. ahead of where she is now. Um, like she needs IEP services and stuff like that. And it's it's just ridiculous when like she, her comprehension and recall of everything is phenomenal. But you sit her down with like a five page paragraph and, you know, it's overwhelming to see so much on a page. And so just even understanding, like having the tip, get a piece of paper and cover that up and work on just one line at a time. Like these are the things that you get to learn and figure out as you go. Yeah. And and then having the community of other homeschoolers to help you along the way, figuring out those little Ah. Well, and I would speak to, uh, I also, um, both my children, my youngest are all, were ha- they had IEP services, but I would say like you just made, you brought up that simple tip. So, I mean, they definitely needed different kinds of services, but some of those easy tips, why did it take a special assessment for them to have that easy tip allowed for them? That's the kind of things that would frustrate me. If you just had somebody that's paying attention, oh, that's too much for you here, cover it with a piece of paper. That doesn't, I don't feel like that needed to go through a whole assessment to figure out these are the tools in the tool bag that you need to give them. And it was just very frustrating. Now, and it was much more than that. But those are simple that I think a lot of kids could benefit from. Not, you know, they yeah take or one chunk at a time. Another big one for me is I never like learned or knew that when you're teaching a child the alphabet, you should be teaching them just go right into the letter sound instead of teaching them the name of the specific letter because that's going to set them up for actually being able to read. I'm like, how come I didn't know? Why aren't we taught something like that? Like, that's like some need to know basis or reckless. The secret. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now yeah. I'm like, with my three year old, I'm just sitting there like, ah, but like, yeah. you know, instead yeah. of like actually singing it through as we look at the letters, because I want to help set her up in a way that I didn't even know I should have, or the teachers didn't suggest. Right. When practicing at home, they just said, oh, she needs to be able to know this list of 50 sight words and do a competition on it on Friday and oh she didn't do so well are you doing them at home like yeah, and that whole competition thing and that whole they should be at this level at the you know at five years three months they should be able to do this it's just so I, I mean I think of any child from any background anywhere they're going to reach different milestones at different time and to put them all in the same bubble and to make sure that to make the child feel bad you know, and that goes on to the list of another reason why I do it, because my children would come home with no confidence because they were told how poorly they were doing in school when that wasn't the case at all. They just needed to do it differently. And that's just so frustrating that we're literally hurting these children's psyches by just taking away their confidence for what? For what? Because you have to check that box that everybody in your third grade class got a good spelling test. I mean, come on. Like, it just ridiculous. Yeah, because they can get their funding and... Right, exactly. They can get that school. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, it's definitely frustrating. It is. Or um, what was another thought that I had? I don't know. But yeah, the confidence thing, and that's a huge part of it for my oldest now, is like just trying to find those ways to boost your confidence because she does shine through when that's there but it's like i'm set up to not be there right right and i mean i get it like some people are naturally gonna have that more than others like for sure but um it's just unfortunate when like all of her friends are excelling and flying by or a good chunk of them and it's like she's gonna sit over here or have to 
I mean, she's like I said, they've had really good teachers. One of hers, um, she would put like depending on what type of learning style her students had, she had two different boards up and would like figure out different ways to put that up. And I thought that was so amazing. And she definitely got it. That's that's a good sign. Yeah. I mean, the teacher has been around. Though that was like a fifty year old teacher. That was sixty year old teacher. She's been doing this for a while. She knows. And she knows, you know, how much has changed over time, too, to where, like, everybody learns differently. And if I've got to get 25 students to be up to par, I better figure out how I'm going to do that. How are you going to do In it? a way that's going to help them and set them up for success right. and not just me as the teacher. Yeah. My, my middle daughter is kinesthetic learner, and we learned that early on. And she actually learned her alphabet by we had an indoor trampoline and every bounce was a letter. And that was the only because she had to be physical, literally physically moving her body for anything to soak into what she was doing. And that was huge. That was huge. But imagine, you know, all the little boys and little girls that just need to wiggle and move and they can probably learn it. But because they have to sit still and be on the carpet and not move and they're not like it's just I feel like they're just being set up for failure. It's just terrible. Yeah. Yeah, um, my, thankfully, like, so we're with a charter right now, and there are some good things with that, and her, her IEP support team and whatever, you know, they're very, like, if she needs more time or if she has to do a test or whatever to submit, like, they're good about that, um, they're, anytime, like, they find out about some awesome new fidget, they're like, here, show this, these for your daughter because like they they are supportive now that they know like how she is with learning so having a doodle pad at least too when she was in first and second grade once we started kind of like analyzing those things they they let her have a doodle pad but then at the same time what does that show the other kids too that maybe don't need to have a doodle i mean they should because they're kids. right right you know what i mean like yeah don't need it that why does she get to have a doodle right. pad? Little, little, little. Well, and my daughter, as she started to get older, she became very aware of these differences or challenges that she maybe had. And I remember in her IEP, she was allowed to have a quiet corner that she could escape to if things got overwhelming for her. Well, the kids started to make fun of her about that. So she never went and used the quiet corner. So at the annual IEP meeting, they took the quiet corner away from her. And now, so it was just all of this stuff that came tumbling down on her. She wanted to use it. She didn't want to be made fun of. Now you take it. It was like a punishment, you know? And yeah. It's just, oh, it's, yes. I'm, I, I don't. And I, I think, you know, the schools can only do so much. And I understand that. But again, that's where I go back to, I can do better than this. Like, this, I can do better, you know? And so I think that's important. And I think, you know, for whatever reasons people might choose to homeschool, if they just take that first step figure out what and and you know and again I think I said earlier you know people that are doing school at home I'm I'm not putting down any ways that people choose to do homeschooling it's just taking that first step and branching out and I think you know being in California that can be scary because there's a lot of fear in California to homeschool there's a lot of fear of um, what might happen or what you know what the proper process is and things like that and so I think getting the awareness out is definitely a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I like to actually share about that because California is surprisingly one of the lenient homeschooling states. Like, if you want to do it completely private, like not attached to a charter or anything, you just file your affidavit every year. Right. And then that... That part is easy, but I will say the experience of having to disenroll and the schools wanting different documentation and that, things. Uh, okay, so I've heard a lot about that. Um, I... I thankfully didn't have that problem. And I don't know if it's just because we're a military family. And so they were used to people pulling the kids out all the time, or if it's because the pandemic changed a lot too. Um, but yes, I've heard that where schools will try and pressure you of why are you like, that's none of your business. <laughs> you have no jurisdiction or reign over any of that. Right. Whatsoever. But and people we're still don't know be paying that. you in right. our tax dollars. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So what do you care? Right. Um, but California too, I mean, people have been homeschooling here for a long time, especially when you think about it like in the hippie sense, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, but I think that's kind of at least really set up uh, the opportunity is uh, the, there's, there are just a lot of ways. There are a lot of resources in California for it, which is amazing. There are a lot of co-ops and nature groups and pods and definitely uh, enrichment centers and like, um, sewing classes, music classes, things like that that are open during the day, which would normally be open only in the evening or weekend. 
they want to cater to a homeschooling community, so they open their their st store or whatever up earlier on. So there is a lot there, and you know, I think maybe a lot of people just don't know or realize that. Or I mean, I didn't know that right off the bat. Sure. You know, took some digging. Yeah, once once you find it, and it took us a while to find our kind of like our our niche and our sea legs. But once you do find it, it is you know fantastic once you get that community and the support the support is huge because i think you know having to be alone with the kids every single day and not have anything to look forward to like park days or some sort of release somewhere that can be a little hard but definitely once you find that group or like you said charter or whatever it might be that definitely is helpful for sure and then the kids see that they're not the only ones being homeschooled either it's kind of like yeah. their norm so that's important as well yeah. yeah, for sure. So um, what do you want to tell other families that want to get started in homeschool? Um, your child is worth it and they're yours and they're only young for so long. And there's so much that you can do to help them in those years to set them up for life. And I just like, why not? Why? What is your hesitation? Like, I mean, my hesitation was pretty much like, my husband support me in this and that's that is a big thing there are a lot of husbands that are like no or maybe it's the husband that wants to homeschool and the wife doesn't um so i mean i know that there's a lot of uh, about it but again like they're worth it and for me and the people that i really connect with you know they're starting to realize so much and learning the history of like how the public school education system began and so when you start really digging into all of those sorts of things and seeing basically what their end goal is, sure, you need to think about what is your end goal? This is your child. This isn't their child. Right. So why are you giving them so much power over your child's future when they were given to you to raise and to bring up and, you know, to lead in the right direction? Um, I also think... I mean, I'm I'm very like much not a sugarcoating person, and I think a lot of people just want to take the easy way out. And I know that circumstances are different, um, but why take the easy way out? Like that doesn't ever produce anything good. Typically, you know, like if you're looking at the broad scheme of things, for example, if you are trying to figure out how to, um, you know, get your toddler to not keep acts out in a certain way and you just overlook it mm -hmm. and ignore it you're just creating a ticking definitely um, you know whether discipline punishment commitment you know a lot of like where we are now people don't have that it's like where did everyone's backbone go mm -hmm. and i'm sorry but i just don't know Ralph i'm saying like those quiet well don't start out that out yeah no don't um, apologize it's it's very hard especially even in general society, even as adults, there are so many times that just simple, decent manners are missing from a simple exchange of, you know, somebody in the grocery store, or some, you know, somebody that, you know, you see, you know, at the post office or whatever, that just the very simple, you know, manners and just exchange is just, it's not even there. It's not even there. And that, you know, comes from however they were raised. And if so, they weren't told or taught how to say please and thank you, then that's missing. And then it does just, and that's a very simple and broad stroke of, you know, talking about the discipline and things like that. But if they're not taught or shown, then, yeah. you know, it just keeps on going, it perpetuates a bad cycle for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like they don't necessarily want to be in that position but sometimes they don't realize it or you know maybe their backs up against the wall because of again of all the ways that we've been like bogged down by like mm. the systems of society um and so it's not like we naturally want to be like a pushover or taking the easy way or whatever it's just we've kind of grown into that Definitely. and i think over the last you know five years a lot of people are starting to realize like uh no time to turn around yeah. and start over and yeah and um and get things situated and and just changed and better um and on better on a better force yeah and and i will say to your point about homeschooling in california i think also 
you know, they realized, again, something good to come out of the pandemic was a lot of families wanted to homeschool. That was something that they wanted to do. And so they made it more available, whether through charter or things like that, and then passing the funding on to the parents so they could do certain things and things like that. So definitely a good thing. Uh, you know, again, I don't think the pandemic was a good thing, but trying to spin it into these positive things yeah. that came out of it. So for sure. Right. Because it did happen. Like, you know, it happened. So why why focus on all of the bad and um, at least look at the good that did come from it? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it woke up a lot of people to realizing everything that how everything is intertwined and connected. And um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they, they took on homeschooling on their own during that instead of doing the virtual stuff. And then they realized, I got this. Mm hmm. I can do this. Yeah. Um, and my children have been better off since. And so it's kind of like, um, I don't know what the exact phrase is, but there's something along the lines of like, you don't know what you're going to do until you get punched in the face. <laughs> like, you don't know, you can say I'm going to react like X, Y, Z. But, but you don't know. But until it actually happens, you don't know. And, and so that like really got people forced into figuring it out. Yeah. And, and what do you say to those that say, um, you're stunting your child's development, social development, because they're, you know, isolated or they don't have kids to play with or they don't know, they won't know what it means to be in a team or things like, what do you say to people who say that? Because I know I've gotten that question a lot for homeschooling. And what do you say to that? Um, my children have actually come more out of their shells, specifically the one that was already had no confidence and was hiding in corners and crying and hiding her under her blanket and miserable. And she has blossomed. She's in trauma club. Like, she has blossomed. She's found her voice. I mean, we still have areas to work on, um, but she's blossomed, first of all. Um, and then it's not like we don't do anything. Right. Actually, find find a homeschooling community, and you have plenty of socialization. I also believe that socialization doesn't come from desks in a four-wall oh. room with children all the same age. Correct. <laughs> because cool. where is that really going to lead them and teach them? Yeah. I remember growing up, like, one of my grandmas was always taking me to lots of stuff to get me. And, I mean, this was during school years or school years. She was taking me everywhere, the library, the grocery store, mm -hmm. and, and showing me how to have that respect and manners and uh, com conversations, holding the door, helping people out, Um and then my other grandparents, you know, I would go stay with them for a week or two and I would get indulged into so much stuff. And I get it. Like there are those situations if it's like a single mom and they have no support and X, Y, Z, but that's hard. It's hard. I just, I, I want them to know, like the support is there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just don't know how to find you. And so like go looking because people will help them and support them 100 percent yeah um i know plenty of people who have made it happen they just had to take that step like you mentioned um oh yeah I, well i know two families both the parents work in the family um but they have i don't know if it's an aunt or maybe a grandma that watches them during the day but then they do all their homeschooling at night and that's just mm -hmm. their routine and that's what they do now that's hard and that's you know can be taxing but it's um they they believe in it that much that they're willing to do that yeah yeah fun. and i mean i go through you know those seasons too as a military spouse where my husband is gone and i don't have any friends well, my friends now i don't have family local it takes a while to really build good trusting relationships and and then they move or i move mm -hmm. and we're starting over so i very much understand that side of what that could be like um, I'm not saying it's the same in the trench, but I have my own form of it. And, you know, I just, I just pick up the next day and start all over again and have grace and um, patience as much as I can, <laughs> um, you know, and realize like a huge part of it too is like start your day, you know, do your warm up activity type of thing for the day. Start with your kids outside because there's nothing wrong with starting off your day outside, grounding the sun, all of that fresh air. Um, or taking the activities, the lessons outside, yeah. you know, finding any little, any little way to get through and to make progress and realize too, like I said, grace, if, if you guys survive today, pick up again tomorrow. Sure. I mean, don't take the lazy, lazy route every day, but 
pick up again tomorrow. Sure. No, for sure. That's why I love your take on that. Yeah, I'm always seem like I'm always in the beginning. And this was before COVID, we had started homeschooling, but I was always having to, you know, have a battle plan ready for people that would say, well, how do you know they're getting socialized? And, how do you, and it was like, I don't think my child's any better off at a school for seven hours a day, boxed into a room and with a 15 minute break, maybe, and then being told they have to hurry up and eat their lunch to go play on the playground. I don't think that's going to do any good for them more than what I... Their, their free time is taken away. Their exactly. Their the hours are cut or eliminated or they give like an elementary school kids like detention type punishment and you can't go to recess because you didn't finish this or... Yeah, that's terrible. Um, You know, like they've taken away so much of the enjoyment. Like I get how people have a nostalgia of thinking back to what it was for them, but that was 20, 30, 40 years ago and it's not like that anymore. Not. Mm -mm. You you truly have to go walk through those school walls and just sit there and figure that out. Yeah. No, it's it would definitely open some people's eyes. And I think, like we said, it's some people's eyes are opening. And so I hope um, families, if they are out there looking, you know, reach out to you, reach out to anyone that can help. There are resources and there are things that you can find. So how can people find you? Um, yeah, my Instagram would honestly be the best. Um, I don't have any other like specific business type stuff set up in that regard for helping with school homeschooling. That's the easiest. I do check it daily, um, but at least it's enough to where I have my boundaries of sure. personal time. And that's that's the mom. It's mom midnight ride 2.0, and there's a period in between each of those words. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's Midnight Ride 2.0. Okay, so they can find you there. And then really quickly, I do want to say, especially as um, your military family, we thank you for your service. I know in and of itself, that is such a sacrifice on all of you. And I know the hardship. So I just want to say a big shout out to thank you for that, because I know that's big. Um, thank you to doing what you're doing with homeschooling and being the voice of, you know, getting uh, awareness out there of what's happening and what's going on. And um I hope that maybe you'll come back on and we can maybe get a little bit <laughs> more specifics of certain homeschooling things and tactics and things like that. And uh, do you have anything else that you'd like to share? Mm. No, I really enjoyed this, though. Uh, you know, finding any other outlet or way to help people, especially like in something like this, this is a good way for me um, to find ways to help others and just share and help like shed light on those areas that people might not have thought of um because you know the social media realm is kind of like it's what it is today this is how you're going to get in touch with people this yeah. is how you're going to make those connections and figure it out so, so mm. might as well use it for the positive right i yep. mean use to our, at our advantage yeah for sure yeah, for sure i'm i'm here for it <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much, Melissa, for your time and everything that we're doing. And hopefully we'll see you again and have you yeah. back. Thank you, Dara. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to Everything's Messy Podcast. If you don't mind, if you'd head on over to wherever you listen to your podcast at and like, subscribe, maybe leave me a review. I would totally appreciate that. If you'd like to be considered to be a guest on our podcast, please reach out to me at everythingsmessy at gmail.com. You can also find me on social media at Everything's Messy Podcast on Instagram. I'm also on X, which was Twitter at Everything's Mess and Facebook at Everything's Messy Podcast. Once again, I'd love to hear from you in any capacity and anything that you'd like to share with me. Thanks again for listening.